welcome to the Colburn School. My name is Lee Chopa. I am the Dean of the Colburn Conservatory. And we have been fortunate enough for the past week and a half to have Sarah Willis here with us on campus. And she has been so generous with her time with our students, sharing her musicianship and sharing her humanity. And you're gonna hear some master teaching tonight um, with Sarah and with Andrew Bain, who is our faculty member. I hope you all enjoy hanging out. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Horn Master class. And uh, how many of you have seen Andrew's horn hangout? Okay, for those of you who haven't, this guy was in the room with us. Because Andrew is, of course, not only principal horn of the Los Angeles Philharmonic and, um, and the horn professor here at Colburn, he's also Mr. Star Wars. You know, we went to see Star Wars the other day with, my, with uh, the, the latest one with my sister, and she was like, can you stop digging me in the rib and say, that's Andrew, every five minutes. So welcome to all of you in the room, and a huge welcome to you guys online, really. I, we're be, we've been amazed. The chat has been so busy. So who have we got first? We have Kalette Torres, who is um, a fourth Third year? Third year. Third year with you. I met Kalette in, in Japan, in Sapporo, at the Pacific Music Festival last year, uh, last summer. Let's start with Kalette Torres. Arturo Sandoval says hello. Oh, Arturo Sandoval is watching. A big round of applause for Arturo. That's amazing. No pressure or anything. Can you play as high as Arturo? Uh, yeah, probably. To come out here and start the master class is really a very brave thing to do. And the thing with us horn players is we come out, we're all sort of warming up backstage, and we come out here and we bow, and the first thing that tends to leave us is our air. And you have a beautiful sound, and you're a fantastic player. Your air let you, let, that it just, unfortunately, it happens to us all. That's the first thing. We need, you need to, while you're playing, even if you're nervous, try and engage the side of your brain that's going, oh my God, I'm live on that, you know, that side of your brain, and think, okay, no, breathe, just breathe, breathe, breathe. And in this whole first page, you want to empty as much air through the horn as you can. Well, oh, we can have you, wait, come here. Blow, <laughs> blow him down. Now a bit further away. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, a bit, bit more, a bit more. There we go. Play me just that first note again. Bomb. There you go. And I want exactly that. It's a difference between, I'm hearing a little bit. I'm hearing a little bit, and I want to hear all. But just, can I get, yeah, please. sing it. Oh. Yeah. Da, 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 da. That's great. So how, how you cope with uh, nerves? <laughs> That's how another you, masterclass, right? How do you cope with nerves, Andrew? Ah, I, I actually um, do a lot of work with, uh, I'm sure a lot of people in, in the internet land and also here have worked with Don Green or have worked with his books. Uh, and for quite probably 15 or more years I've been working with his stuff. I have a centering process that I use. Um, and I've seen this. I've sat next to Andrew many times, and I've just just before the conductor comes on, I've looked over to say something about the weather or the audience, and Andrew's going. So I know to leave him alone at that moment. But, Bob. You know, Bob. Bob. Oh yeah, Bob. Bob. Tell them about Bob. Well, my my <laughs> left brain is Bob. <laughs> so when my left brain starts talking to me, I say, "G'day, Bob. How's it going? Just you can just sit over here, and I'll get back to you at the end should of the we, concert." We, that's that's Andrew's Bob. <coughs> Bob, yeah. Bob. Oh God. Bob the stormtrooper. I think mm. now um, we have someone backstage. We have Jenny. Uh, no, no, we, we have, have Alison, who is Jenny's student from Chapman University. Jenny. <laughs> How are you feeling? Good. So you, you heard the whole thing about nerves and, and breathing, and now you're not going to have any, right? <laughs> It's a really cool piece. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things that I think is important when we place pieces without accompaniment, we utilize silence. Silence is a really important thing in music, and particularly in a piece 
we're, we get the feeling when we're playing on the stage on our own that we have to keep going. And one of the tricks that I use when I play a cadenza or a piece on my own is to, is to think about when I, have, when I have a chance to stop, wait longer than I'm comfortable with, wait a little bit longer, think about playing, <laughs> wait a little bit longer, and then play. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what I want to think is, okay, first thing I'm, I'm doing is I'm nervous. So my trigger for ner when I'm nervous, I want to think, okay, I have a feeling here that I want to make sure that I create. And that feeling will make me breathe well. Right? We can sort of create that feeling by just breathing through the straw. So I want you to suck as much air as you can, as quickly as you can through the straw. It's a lot of body work going on. Yeah, and I felt you breathing in, but I didn't really... It wasn't enough. So this yeah. is a really good trick. Try it again. I'm, I'm going to feel it for... Yeah, that's it. And I want to push against my hand. Not, not so much. Shoulders shouldn't go up. <coughs> there we go. All right, she's ready. The thing with the straw is it gives you a little bit of resistance, something to pull against. And it just, it's like my trigger to remind me of how I want to breathe. Because it's easy... Even at our level, sometimes you, if you get nervous, you, f you forget, it, you, things shrink down. And so it's just good, and I, at the start of every day, I try and just remember what it feels like. Okay, um, how about some low horn? You guys ready for some low horn? Um, Maxwell Paulus from, UC, uh, from UCLA. Come on in. Hi. Hi, come on in. Because no chewing, no chewing allowed. Can you play it slurred for me? Let's play it together. And another thing with the bagatelle, I would not play this too long. Um, you, you made it. I would, I would make them. Because there's two legatos on that, on, on, on those notes anyway. Um, this, this is a perfect example of when, when we're practicing, it's really important that you give yourself the permission to experiment with things. And not just, if something's not working, just to pound it the same, same way and hoping that it's going to get better. Right? Sometimes it might get better, but you, but you have all this information. And if you don't have the information, then find out some information and work out how it applies to you. We always keep experimenting. Don't be scared in your practice sessions to necessarily, you don't have to sound perfect. You're the only person hearing your practice. So you give yourself the opportunity to try something new and learn something. I remember when I was studying and living in Vienna a few years ago. Um, but you're and, a young horn player. Yeah, I was quite young. Well, I was younger then. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, would, I was, it was basically, I didn't have a job, didn't have anything to do. I was, it was freezing cold in the winter and I was sitting in the practice room and I would just noodle around with certain things in the low register. I didn't understand, I, I knew what I wanted to do and I would try and tap into the information that I had gotten and then experiment with myself. Now there's so much more information online and, and you can go to a whole bunch of classes and, and listen to really great players and, and find out what they do. Find out what, if I was a low horn player, the first thing I would do is find out what Sarah Willis does and experiment. It might not all work for me, <laughs> but there's, there's a pretty amazing example of how to play in that register. So if you can discover what she does and put it into your playing, you're gonna be on the right track. But it's all about the sound as well. You know, you want to, you find a sound that you like and you want to imitate that. But how do you do that? And don't be too afraid in a practice room to really <laughs> until you find where it sounds good. Aha, 
I like that sound, so what am I doing? And I just realized when I did it that I was, I was tipping into the top lip a little bit more when I went, maybe that works for you, maybe it doesn't, then try tipping into the lower lip. But always practice extremes, practice it fortissimo and see what it's like, and then try go, same sort of thing, because very often in the orchestra you have to play quiet low notes more often than you have to play the loud ones, and those are the scary ones. <laughs> like to play what we, where we sound good in. I mean, we all do. And every day, no matter what you practice, you should always play, you should always practice something you sound great in and you love to play. Because why do we all play the horn? Because we love the sound. Wouldn't you agree? That's what we love the most about the horn. So every day, even if you're going through really difficult stuff and you're really modern pieces or whatever, play something you love and sounds beautiful. But push yourself the rest of the time. Honesty is a good policy, it Sarah. It is. Be honest with your deficiencies. Yes. Who have we got? Oh, we've got Annie's student, Jasmine. Say hi to Bob. These are useful. <laughs> I share something about this. Yeah. It's exactly what you say about the fuck is, is spot on. I, from from someone who doesn't have a great low register at all. Rubbish. Maybe you you'll believe me more than someone who has the most amazing low <laughs> register in the okay, world. Okay, two beers. Um, but what the the way I think about low register because for me, if if I leave it, it it goes away. And Farkas talks about that. That it's it's like you have to build the groove. It's like has anyone ever made a sandcastle at the beach near in, in sort of wet sand? If you don't keep digging, what happens? The hole fills in and you end up with nothing. You work and then you've got nothing. So it's, 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 a, it's a thing that you need to keep working at very regularly and you need to do a lot of it. And the, and the thing is you need to play really loud. Yeah. It's one of the, like playing in the upper register, playing really, really loud is all that's gonna do is probably hurt yourself. And it's maybe not, if you're not doing it efficiently, it's, it's dangerous. In the low register, if you can play loud with a quality of sound, you, you're doing the right things generally. And it builds an enormous amount of strength. Like Sarah was saying last night with the, with the program that we played, I mean, she was playing all the low parts, and it's really tiring because these muscles have to be incredibly stable. And that's what we're, you're building in the low register is this stability to let all that air through and have inside very relaxed. I still I wish to hear Jasmine play a little bit more heroic. Yeah. And I loved how you sang it. Can we three play it together? make a beautiful horn sound, you're musical, I would just like you to be a bit more physical about your playing, put more air through your horn, practice your low range more, because you may think like you've not played much, but we can hear exactly how you play in those few notes, you know, it's great. You showed us everything you could do and also things you maybe need to work on. So that would be my recommendation for you, is to work on your low range for your air, use more air, sing all your phrases, and when you play this piece, imagine the two of us standing next to you and blowing the whatever out of it. Yeah? Can you do that? Yeah. Great. Annie will make sure you do. I'll be asking her. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody stand up and do this. Oh! 
and down again. Oh. Okay, now sit down again. Thank you. So, who do we have coming up? We have Melia. Yeah. Oh, listen to that. You won already. Now, Melia just said, I asked if she'd like a chair because in American auditions, you usually, or even wherever, everything, you sit doing your excerpts. You don't sit in Germany when you do an audition. If you ever go for an audition in Germany, don't ask for a chair. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. Uh, what are your problems with this? <laughs> You see how difficult it is to hear that dum 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 dum, and the conductors always want to hear that. And in an audition, we want to hear that as well. So it's okay to play it dum 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 dum. You know, do you have to go dum dum dum? That's how. That's the way we usually hear it. Okay. And you heard what Andrew did. He goes bum 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 bum. I want to hear all that when you play by yourself. Once more. <laughs> Good, well done, Elia. Yeah. Really, you. really enjoyed it. So you can do this year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. Looking forward to it. Well done. Bravo. That excerpt is probably just about the only excerpt that is on every audition. High, low, middle. It's it's on first horn auditions. It's on second horn, third horn. Every audition you'll play Shostakovich goes far. So it's one of those excerpts that it shows. It, you probably never win an audition playing that excerpt, but you certainly can get kicked out of. Normally it'll be on the first round. You'll get kicked out of the first round if you can't play it. So last one we have uh, we have Kimberly. Welcome. Hi. Are you going to say hello to Bob? I don't want you to chew those notes. It says mezzo piano, but it doesn't mean lose the intensity. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting late at night. Everyone's getting very silly. Have you um, danced a lot of tango in your life? No. And uh, do you, have you listened to a lot of tango in your life? I watched a few YouTube videos. Yeah? So you know about this. <laughs> Andrew? Oh. No, I, I've got a sore leg. <laughs> you won't do no sore leg. <laughs> okay, we'll get to the low range stuff in a sec, but I need to hear the bandonian. Ba -da 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 -ba 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 -da. And it's very sort of, you know, sort of ochos and all that. And, and the woman's always going, <laughs> you know, it's a great dance because she's always like shaking her hair around and, and all this back. And it, it's just the most amazing dance, but it's this sort of game between a, a man and a woman. And, and it's always, <laughs> and we need to hear that right at the very beginning. Are you going to dance? Well, no, uh, there's a request. Ah, what's the request? That you dance a tango. Ah! <laughs> I'm really grateful for this chance to be here to. We are very grateful to have you. Yeah, thank you. I'm grateful. Aren't we, everybody? Yes. <laughs>